a little bit different. Um, most of my job involves call structures. We are a financial institution. We have like 250 locations, all of which have their own individual access storage locations. So one thing I want to cover at start is when we, we wanted as much uniformity as possible. So we make sure all of our objects are set up. And again, this is not my work laptop, but just two things I want to cover is our over here, we have take ownership and change permissions. Uh, we try to keep people as little po little power as possible, because otherwise they have a very bad habit of getting themselves in trouble, and then we've got to jump the hoops to get them out of trouble. So we try to make sure that we not our users don't have access to take ownership of folders or change any permissions, because they have a very bad habit of blocking us out and again problems. So what we've done is for all of our locations, we have set up a template. A folder, and this is pretty much a script that we use to create it to create any new location. So I'm a big fan of uh, prompting for all variables. That's how I do things. So we start off with uh, every location has got a, a numeric numeric value. It's got a, a district where it falls in, in our corporate hierarchy, and the city, just because it's easier to read. Once we have that uh, squared away and imported. We copy all of our information from our template, and our template actually is in this 844 MSS uh, template folder. And this is our admin, just to make sure we have us listed as the only people who have full control of the folder. And from here, we do a bunch of stuff where we will actually will uh, parse the numbers and break break up into the actual branch numbers. And again, we're because of the way our template set up, we've got to remove all of our numeric numerical values from the template as well as put them and replace them with the new numbers. So again, we have our old, old branches over here, the new number, the new location. All of our folder structure is based on this also. <clears throat> and for each of our branches, each location, we have a manager and an admin group and another admin group because of old school design. And we try to give them each different, different rights, different folders. There's probably about 10 different folders in each location subfolder. And again, because we're trying to improve consistency, we want to make sure they're all set the same way. So if we have a new branch, this is just a couple of uh, fries and caches to say, do the AD groups exist? Because each location has its own AD group, and they don't have access to each other's group for security reasons. We've also set it up where uh, we don't want our admins to be handling most of this. We want our level one support center to actually be empowered to do a lot of these changes. We actually have them set up the, the manager of a lot of these groups. So if there is a change, then we're going to need to contact us. Our level one people can just make the change on their own. And that's what that line is for. They're managed by, say, once we do create the new AD groups, which is why we had a 20 second wait, we want to make sure that they actually still existed because we had issues where the script would actually run and AD had been populated to all of our AD servers. So it would end up airing out halfway through. We have to run it again. Inside your, your catch there, you're actually doing the work. You're creating a new one. Is that what I saw there? So what well, basically it says. Yeah. So if there's no, there is no group with that name. You're creating it on the fly. If the A group exists, I'm sorry. If the A group does not exist, then we're going to create it. You're creating it on the fly. Yeah. Based on the user on the prompts all the way at the beginning. So if you. Fat finger something, you fat fingered a brand new group. Yes, that's why I prompt in. You should be able to see what we made a mistake. Again, it's only three digit numbers. Again, no, we're, we're good. I'm just sorry. If, if you got no critiquing, I'm just like, never seen somebody do the work in the catch. It's always been, hey, I'm throwing an error. So it's an interesting idea. I mean, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of like it. We, so. we have good. fat fingered it, or you have mistyped something, or people have misspelled cities. Multiple times. But again, <laughs> no experience there at all. No, 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 no. We're not blaming names, John. <laughs> but even so, it's, hey, it's sometimes you get your information, you can you can manually change it. But the goal here is to minimize a lot of the manual work that you end up doing. Yeah. And that's why, especially for a repetitive task like this, if I have to add five more locations, I can do that pretty instantaneously. Of hey, it takes me about 20 seconds per time. Most of the 20 seconds is waiting for that thing to sync. So. A little bit further down. So this is all the AD uh, stuff, AD groups for the managers, admins, and the actual locations themselves. Then we have our folders. 
And a folder is pretty much it's the same setup. We just pull the path from what we have set up. District 88 testing, that's our, our test district. We have all of our templates in there, and as well as other paths. We pretty much just create them on the fly. Based on what the template says, change all of our numbers, and then we can apply, uh, make sure that we're set as the admin. So again, should there be an issue, we can access it, and in theory, nobody else can. And we try to disable inheritance because at this level, because we, we have because we have different rights from the root to each individual subfolder, we don't want everybody to have access to them, and we try to individually set it. And the reason we set that is further down, which is uh, further down with our, our access control list and all of our rights. So even over here, you see here we have our we see our owner, which has full rights. What what gives you this command line? Is that is that the quest stuff? This is the quest and the AD. Security tools. Yes, AD security, NTFS security. NTFS security. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple NTFS uh, modules out there. Why, why that and not the native command line? I'm, I'm just curious. Somebody smarter than me said you use them and they work, and I said, oh. okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I've used it as well. I, I was so, curious. So that is a lot. You, is a lot easier to read. Set the owner that. Yeah. As opposed to you could do it using the ACL. But it looks yeah. a lot different. So it does, yeah, it, so, yeah. it looks a lot different. I do a lot of these to get, get ACLs for a lot of stuff, but, but you don't do that. Not if I can avoid it. But and yeah. even then, when I when we yeah. do do the get get ACLs, it's still just taking what we have for repetitiveness. So we just mm -hmm. change all our groups to be from the generic test to that specific, and that's that was the big goal of trying to repeat and minimize our pickups and our one off of why is this person have access to certain things. And again, we still have a couple that out of our 250 locations, somebody says, How do we, why do we not have access to this anymore? And the response is, well, you weren't supposed to have access to it in the beginning. So you still don't have access. Thank you. Yeah, you, you're still not have access. <laughs> We're still bonding stuff and trying to make repairs. But now that we have this all scripted, it's a lot easier to ensure standardization. I mean, right or wrong, at least it's all set the same way. So regardless of where you go or what you do, it's set the same exact way. And if we do need to make a change, we'll typically change them to everything and pray we don't break something. Did we? Yeah. Did we done now? I'm sorry. Yeah. Thanks. I'm good. Good job, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, you have the ACL, and then you have the access control. So now put that back to a variable. This is 32. Oh. Well, and so this is a just, yeah, and so yeah, uh, so dollar dollar a equals yeah, yeah. Okay. ACL. and then dollar a dot access dollar a knows your aces so full control system dollar read next built in administrators have read next to you yeah. users have read next oh yeah yeah that's okay. So, but I don't there think it's a permissions problem for the DLL itself. I think it's the instantiation inside VBA of that. So I think the call is wrong of that. Does it work in other places or no? Oh, hang on a second. Uh, this system, this wow, yeah. what, what this wow? This wow 64. 64. A dot. So it's not that you can't access the file. You can access the file, but it's not. So. So it may not be a permission. It may not be not permission. This could be a broken DLL or whatever else, right? Well, well I'm thinking it's just the instantiation. Are, are, some are you instantiating it using you hit reg SBR32? Yeah, I already tried. Already tried the. Yeah. Reg SBR32. Right. So, 